My father served in World War II, and when it came to food that he ate, I always heard about something that was called chipped beef. You may know it by a little more colorful name. Well, today, I'm gonna be making its oinky, better tasting cousin, because we're gonna be making pig on a shingle. Yep, pig on a shingle. So what's pig on a shingle? Well, the shingle is gonna be some fried bread and the pig is gonna be some smoked pulled pork. First thing we gotta do is we gotta get our rub ready. Our rub starts with half a cup of brown sugar. And to that, I'm adding half a cup of a barbecue rub that was given to me by my sister-in-law. It's called Wise Barbecue Rub. This is it. It was made by someone who she knows through work and I honestly don't know anything more than that, so if you're the one who makes this rub, it's pretty good. Drop a comment down below and let people know who you are. So we're gonna get our lid on our little container here and shake it up. Get in there and break up any of those brown sugar pieces that tend to clump together. All right, there we go. Let's get this on our pork butt. What we're working with today is about a six pound bone-in pork butt. Just gonna cover it like we normally would. No binder on this, there's plenty of moisture on the surface. If you've watched enough of my videos, you've heard me say this before, I generally don't use binders unless the surface is very dry. There's still a lot of moisture on the outside of this butt. Great smell off of this rub. That Wise Rub is really nice. Again, I don't know the name of the person who made it. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's get it out to the Weber kettle. So the Weber kettle temp is at 236 and rising. Let's get this lid off and get our pork butt on. I have the kettle set up with the slow and sear running with water in the reservoir and just some foil for a drip pan. Also have my ambient temperature probe in there for the Thermapro. I'm gonna get my temperature probe in here. That's looking right on the money at 42 internal. It's been sitting out for about 20 to 30 minutes. So let's get some wood on here and start smoking. I'm gonna be using hickory today. All right, our hickory is just starting to catch there. Let's get the lid on and start smoking. I'm going to set my bottom vent to the one third open position. And I'm gonna set my top vent about half. So I'm gonna try and keep the kettle around 250 degrees today. It may move between 225 and 275. Really anywhere in that range is fine. I just don't want it to go a lot higher than that or drop below 225. So 250 is the target. The ultimate internal temperature we're going for, somewhere in the 200 range, but it's about tenderness here. We'll probe it for tenderness as we get closer to that internal temperature range. Really the next thing we're gonna do in a few hours is check this, see how the bark is developing and decide if we need to spritz it. So I'll see you back here in a few hours. All right, we are just about three hours in. Our kettle temps running 258. It's been rock solid between 250 and 265 all along. Internal temperature of the pork butt. Looks like it's 130. Just wanna take a look at this, see how it's doing, and we're probably gonna to have to add a little bit more wood. That is looking really nice. You can see there's still quite a bit of moisture on the surface. We don't need to spritz or add anything, but you're just starting to get that barky crust in places. If you scratch your finger across it, you can feel it. So looking really good, but we're definitely gonna to need to add some more wood right now. Here's our piece of hickory, which has been pretty well used up. We're gonna add a fresh piece here. All right, our hickory is caught. Let's get our lid back on and keep smoking. We'll check it again when we get probably closer to 160, kind of in that stallish range. All right, we are just over four hours into this cook. Kettle temps, 252, it's been holding just rock steady in that 250, 260 range. Meat temperature is 159, and it's been kind of moving really slow now, so we're in the stall. Time to wrap this up in some butcher paper. All right, let's get this butt off of here and get it wrapped up. Might be hard to tell in this light, but man, that looks good. All right, let's get our probe out of here 
and move this over to the table where we're going to wrap it. All right, so all I'm using here is just pink butcher paper. Just going to go one layer here. And that's it. Let's get it back on the kettle. Our wrapped butt back on here. Okay, let's see if our probe got close to where we had it before. 158, not bad. We were at 159 before, so we're in a good spot. Let's get the lid back on and let this keep cooking. And that fire will go out as soon as we get this lid on and it smothers down a bit. Bring you back when we're getting close to 200 and we start checking for tenderness. All right, our internal temperature is 199 right now. Close enough to 200. Let's check and see how tender we are. Just gonna do some probing here and see what everything feels like. That's sliding in and out nicely. You have to remember you're going through paper here and it's gonna be a little catchy on this probe. I'm gonna say that feels pretty tender. <laughs> I don't wanna unwrap it because it's gonna stay wrapped for at least another 30 minutes before we pull this. But it's time to get this off here. Get our probe out, get this inside. All right, I've got my nonstick pan nice and hot here and I'm just gonna fry up some bread, buttered on both sides with some nice French bread. I want to give it a nice toast in here. You could do this in the oven, a toaster oven, anything you want, but I want to do it here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my bread now. Looking good. All right, that's looking good to me. Let's go ahead and get this off of here and move on to pulling that pork. All right, here is our pork butt. Let's see if we can get the bone out, if it's gonna come fairly clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming clean. Now I just wanna see, I'm gonna pull this excess fat off the top here, leave a little bit, not a lot, because the fat cap was up here. I'm gonna take that. And we're just gonna start working our way down in here. We'll use the bear claws if it gets too hot. I have some hand protectors under my gloves, but you can see just how tender this is. Really nice. So that was a total of about seven and a half hours of cook time. Final internal temperature when it was tender was 199 degrees. I don't even know if I'm gonna need the bear claws to shred this, it is just coming apart so nice. Everything here. Getting a little toasty on my hands, but I can deal with it, especially if I get to take a quick taste. That's good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start adding our sauce here, mixing this up. And the sauce I'm gonna be adding to this today is a vinegar-based sauce. It's an Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce from my friend Scott Bailey. He has a YouTube channel uh, called The Real Show Barbecue. I've used his sauce before in other videos. It is excellent. So I am just going to pour sauce in here and mix this up. Oh, that smell coming off this, that vinegar sauce. That is just terrific. And just keep shredding as you need to here. Look at that. Oh, this is just beautiful. Beautiful smelling, beautiful looking. I know it's gonna be beautiful tasting. All right, I'm gonna transfer this into a bowl and let it cool for about 10 minutes. And then we're gonna build this pig on a shingle. All right, here are our two pieces of fried bread, toasted, it looks beautiful, nice and crispy. Let's get some of this pulled pork on here because this is pig on a shingle. This is the shingle. Again, the more colorful term, most people know that. If you don't, ask a friend. Get a good amount on top of here. Now we're gonna to top this with some coleslaw. And if you're interested in how to make this coleslaw, I'll put a link in the video description to the video I did on this and up here in the corner. This slaw we make specifically for barbecue dishes and if you watch the video on how to make it, you'll see why. A nice topping on there. Just 
everybody on this shingle here. And there we go, pig on a shingle. If you don't know what the other one is, you could extrapolate and think what might replace the word pig. That was with beef and chipped beef on toast. This is much better. It looks great. It's time to taste. All right, so the question becomes with this, do you just pick it up and eat it or do you cut it with a knife and fork? First bite, I'm gonna try and go for it. It's gonna be a mess. It's gonna fall. Just I'm letting you know that it's gonna fall. But here we go. Mm. Oh man, it didn't fall. I'm really surprised. But I know on the second bite, it's gonna fall. It didn't fall. Now from the stories my dad told about that meal, I know this would taste nothing like that. And I also know there are people who like chipped beef on toast. So yeah, I'm poking a little fun at it, but give this a try. If you've made pulled pork, toast up some bread, put some amazing coleslaw on top, this is a winner. Mm.